Today we're going to try to demystify running tool length offsets in Mach 3 without a tool presetter. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, if you're a friend of the channel, then you know I just put a new spindle on my Grizzly G0704 CNC mill back here. Now previously, I was using the stock R8 spindle, so I was able to use the Tormach tooling system, and with TTS, you're able to measure the lengths of the tools on the bench with a height gauge, and then enter that data manually into Mach 3, so it can compensate for the different lengths of the different tools when you swap them out during a CNC program. Now this spindle has a taper, and with taper tooling, there's not really an easy way to measure on the bench unless you want to spend thousands of dollars on a taper tooling presetter. And spoiler alert, I don't. So I'm going to switch over and instead touch the tools off in the spindle to establish their lengths. And it turns out Mach 3 makes that really easy to touch off tools and automatically update the tool table. But it's something that wasn't very well explained when I was trying to learn it. So today, I'm going to make the video that I wish I'd been able to find. Here's a sampling of the tooling that I have for my new spindle. And these just have, you know, a taper that locks into the mill spindle and a facility for holding a tool. In this case, this is an ER32 collet. This one's a drill chuck. And, uh, and I've got some ER20s. And of course, I've got the Heimer, which is just uh, held in an end mill tool holder so that, again, it can be mounted in the spindle at a repeatable height to measure the position of the workpiece. Now, if you're not familiar with using tool length offsets in a CNC mill, I did a video on that. And I will put a link up here in the corner. And you can go check that out if you would like. Today, we're just going to assume you're familiar with the process. But as a short refresher, essentially what's going on is as we're running a CNC program, we're going to use this taper tooling and these tool holders to swap different tools in. I've got a quarter inch end mill here. I've got a spotting drill. I've got an eighth inch end mill. And one of the things you'll note is that, of course, these different tools stick out a different length from the face of the tool holder. So if I'm going to run a program and swap from one tool to another, then the controller, in this case Mach 3, has to know the relative lengths of the tools so it can compensate so that the tools will cut at the same height and I can make a part. Now, the uh, system that I was using previously is designed to work in an R8 collet. This is, uh, these are actually clone tool holders, but it's called the Tormach Tool System, or TTS. And the way it works is a 3 quarter inch shank, and this fits into a shortened R8 collet. And as that collet tightens up, there's a register here that presses against the face of this, the R8 spindle nose. And so this tool always goes in and ends up at a repeatable height. So all we have to know is the distance between that register and the tip of the tool put that into Mach 3, and it's able to then compensate for tools of different lengths. And the way Tormach generally does this is they sell this, which is a small granite surface plate with a hole in it. And you can just set the tool through that hole so the register's on the surface plate, and then you can come along and measure the tool with a height gauge and enter that number in the tool table in Mach 3. So I grab a shorter tool, measure that one, enter this height into Mach 3. So now when I switch between those two tools, Mach 3 can automatically compensate. But how do we do that with a taper tool? Now, there is a flat face here, but this flat face is not a consistent distance from the spindle nose. What's really going on is this taper is going in and locking against the taper in the spill, in the spindle, and that's what actually determines the Z position of the tool. So we can't measure off of this face because two different tools, there actually is a different amount of space between the spindle nose and that flat surface. So what we need to do instead is use, uh, normally what you do is use a tool presetter with a taper in it that this drops into, locks into place, and then you come over the top and measure it, or it has an optical comparator system. But those systems for taper tooling are very expensive. I thought about trying to make one, trying to figure out, well, could I just mill, just interpolate the right taper in a block and set it in the block under its own weight. But then I wasn't sure if the tension on the pull stud is going to affect different tools differently and get me inconsistent results. And then I realized 
I don't need to do any of that. I already have a uh, something that will hold this, and it's the mill spindle itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to just put these in the mill spindle, touch the tip of the tool off, and use that to measure the length. Now, I thought this was going to be really complicated, but as I looked into it, I realized Mach 3 has features in it to automatically do this and automatically update the tool table. I didn't really find good videos or instructional material on the web that I thought explained it clearly. So today, I'm going to make the video that I wish I had been able to find. Let's go over the mill and take a look at the process. This is Mach 3. I will apologize for the poor quality of this video. I don't actually have a screen capture on this machine just because it doesn't have the horsepower to run it. I do have a new computer coming that is going to have that. So in Mach 3, we have our DROs up here that show the work coordinate system that we're currently working in with the mill. And we have a table of tools. If I go to config, tool table, we have a list of all the tools and their diameters, lengths, and information about uh, where height and diameter where, which we're not going to be worried about today. We're mostly just going to be concerned with the height. So this is a list with a, with a, every tool has a number and every tool has a height. There's some descriptive information in there, but that's just for the humans so that we don't make a mistake. And I have gone through and set the heights of all the tools to zero so that we have a clean starting point. I had these heights all set originally uh, for my TTS tools, but since I'm switching over, I don't want to have any old data in here that causes me to crash the mill at some point. So if we go all the way down, the only one that has a height in here is tool 99, and that's the Heimer, and I have a height in here, and we'll talk about where I got that number here in just a minute. So the first thing we need to do is actually establish a position that we can uh, reliably know where the mill is. Now I've already set the length for the Heimer tool, so I'm going to set the Heimer as my active tool by entering 99 in the tool here and hitting enter. And you can see it does have a height 4.869 inches. And this really isn't that important, we'll talk in a minute about where I got that. And let's go over to the tool offsets and actually zero the mill on something. Here's the Heimer. I'm going to put that in. My foot on the pedal down here. Suck that into the mill. And for our, the purposes today, I'm just going to use the anvil here on the movable jaw of the vise as my flat surface. So the first thing we need to do is locate zero on this. Now I'm going to go past the zero and then I'm going to come up to it. And in fact, I happen to hit it exactly. Okay, so now we are exactly on zero. Now we have to have some kind of a starting reference tool length. Now the Heimer is a hard one to measure because you have to measure it when it's actually under tension and you actually have it resting on a part because the plunger length changes. So we've got this right now set to exactly zero, and we have to choose a reference for the length. Now I could just declare that the Heimer tool length is zero, and that's fine because all Mach 3 really cares about is the relative length of the tools. But if we just declare that this is zero, then what will happen is tools that are longer and shorter are going to have different lengths. The sum will be positive and some will be negative, and that introduces the possibility of dropping a minus sign and causing a crash. So I'm going to run this the same way we would with the Tormach tooling system, and that is we'll establish zero on the face of the spindle. Now, the exact face of the turning part of the spindle is hard to get at, but I can easily get at this surface. So what I did is I brought it down, set it on zero just like this, and I brought in a set of gauge blocks and slid them under here and just measured this length. And that's how I got that length that I have in the tool table for tool 99. And that tool, again, is 4.869. That's the length that I established. So what we're going to do is we're going to zero our work coordinate system using that tool and using that known length. Now, it doesn't actually matter if that length is correct or not as long as it's sufficient that we aren't going to have any negative length tools, I'm happy. Again, because it's only the relative lengths that matter, and since we're going to measure off of our work coordinate system, they'll all be relative to whatever we have on this tool. So to zero the work offset, which I have work offset one, which is G54, 
and I have set this up. You can enter a gauge block height and then set the Z based on the current position of the mill. I'm not using a gauge block with the Hymer. I'm directly on the surface. So I've got zero entered here and I will just click set Z. And so you can see that my Z coordinate here in my current working system is zero. And I do have tool 99 selected with that offset. So now that I have actually zeroed my work offset based on the one tool that I do know the length of, I'm now ready to measure the length of other tools that I don't know the length of. So let's make sure I'm going up so I don't break another Heimer tip. Okay. And let's bring in the first tool we want to measure. And the first tool that I'm going to measure is this one. This is a carbide spotting drill. This is tool number two. So I'll put that in the spindle. Now I need to bring this down and touch this surface. But that's the last thing I want to do is actually bring this down and actually ram a carbide tool into a hardened surface. So there are a couple of ways you could do it. I have previously used brass shims and brought it down and just moved it until it just clamped it, but that's really not very precise because these get beat up and it's hard to tell when you're exactly on it. Instead, I'm going to use a gauge pin. Now this is a three quarter inch diameter gauge pin. You can just buy these individually if you don't have a set of gauge pins. I just picked this up off of Amazon for a few bucks. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this down until we can just roll this under the tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down so it's low enough that it will not fit under. So it will not go under the tool and then I will slowly bring the tool up until it just passes under. And I'm going to do this. I've got it dialed down so I'm incrementing by 10 thousandths of an inch and I'm dialing in the up direction only. You do not want to dial down. And there we go. It just goes under, but I can actually feel it touch. So we are, with this tool, we have confidence that it is now exactly three quarters of an inch off of this surface. Now, because I'm moving in the upward direction. This mill actually has a little bit of backlash in the Z axis, between a thou and two thou of backlash in the Z axis. And so I want to make sure that when I'm using it for measurements, that backlash is always taken out in the same direction. So since I'm moving upward in order to move this pin underneath, I, am the, I wanted to move upward on the Hymer as well. That's why I went past zero and then came up to zero. So now we have this now, so it is exactly three quarters of an inch above the uh, movable jaw here on the vise, which is where we zeroed the work coordinate system. So now I'll come in here, make sure that I have tool two selected. So enter two, hit enter. Now you can see my Z offset currently is zero for that. I touched it off based on a three quarter inch pin. So I have 0 0.7500 in here and then I will just click set tool offset. And what it's done is it's figured out that the Z offset of this tool is 3.354 inches. Now that makes sense because the Hymer was over four inches. This tool is a little shorter and so that makes sense as a Z offset. So I can just say save tool offsets and that will make it permanent. So if I come in here and that opens the tool table, Here's tool number two, my quarter inch spot drill, and it has put in a height of 3.353867 inches automatically. Click apply, click OK. And now the tool length for that tool has now been set. And I can move on to my next tool. Next tool is tool 15 which is a quarter inch three flute end mill for aluminum. Now here is the beauty of this taper tooling system. One tool out, one tool in, done. Now we'll do exactly the same thing to set the height of this. And there we 
we are, there's the zero point. This is tool 15, so I'll come in here, make sure I have tool 15 selected, enter, set tool offset, and I could wait and save these all at the end, but I'm gonna go ahead and save it now just to make sure. And there it is, 3.319787. Apply, okay. Now all I have to do is run through and set the links of all the rest of my tools. And it is that simple. Okay, so we've got our tool table populated. If I go in here and look, I've got a length for tool two. I've just got putting the tools I'm planning on using on a part I'm gonna make here. I've got tool 15, I've got tool 25, and I've got tool 31 in addition to the Heimer. So I've got links on all of those. Let's do a little test. So let's start with the carbide spotting drill, tool number two. Put it in the mill. And let's make sure we have tool number two selected. And then let's go over here to our MDI and let's just wrap it down to a height of one inch. So G0, Z1. And the spindle should wrap it down to one inch above and stop. And there we are. And this isn't exactly an inch wide, but you can see we are about an inch above the tool, above the surface there. In fact, I have a one, two, three block. You can see we're about an inch above the surface. And I'll just leave that there. It's actually behind the tool from where, from your angle, so you can just see the height, but it's not going to hit it, hopefully, okay? So that was good. Let's switch to a different tool that's a different length and do the same thing. So this is a much shorter tool. This is tool 25, my eighth inch end mill. Put that in the spindle. Come back over here, make sure we have tool 25 selected. And I'm gonna do a sanity check and make sure that yes, we do have a height for tool 25 and it's shorter, which is what I was expecting. And let's do exactly the same thing. G0, G0, Z1. And we should wrap it down to the same one inch height at the end of the tool. And there we are, right at one inch. And that is really all there is to it. Now that we've got the numbers in the tool table for these particular tools, we can swap them in and out all day and get repeatable Z heights. Well, I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. And if you have ideas for other kind of quick tip or technique videos like this, uh, go ahead and drop those down in the comments too. Thank you for watching.